Yeah, uh, you're pointing out to the correct reason behind all of these protests that we are seeing almost every day in Iran's uh, for the last eight weeks. Um, the, the death that happened during this month in 2019, it has, has a massive effect in the society back then. And what we are seeing today, it's kind of on the shoulder of what happened then and the procedure that the mothers of these young uh, people who died uh, back then uh, have been asking for for um, justice since then. And then the, um, there's been a lot of calls to action from people um, inside Iran saying, you're going to commemorate that, we're going to remember that. And it became massive. And you're right, every day people are getting angrier and angrier because of of the violence that, that the government has been imposing on people. Yeah. Yet again, the security forces showed no, no sign of pulling back. Another two people were killed. How long can this continue? If you're listening to the people on the ground, it's going to continue until the Iranian government is toppled. It's obvious in their slogans, as well as what, uh, you know, I've been in contact with a lot of people inside Iran, and this is the demand. They're asking the government to step down. Um, it's uh, quite, uh, quite a brave thing to do. You know, as you see, the crackdown is massive, but people are feeling if they continue to live under this government, there is no hope to have a normal life in the future because they're getting killed on the streets for no good reason. A lot of people, they, they are leaked documents and voice recordings of the, of the government's um, forces that are saying that these people are not afraid anymore and, uh, you know, they don't back off. There's the alleyways that like if there's a 30 room, uh, houses in it from all the 30 houses they're going to drop something on, on our head and we cannot go down those alleyways um, and this is the big difference between this rounds of protests that started eight weeks ago uh, and the others that started like in, in the last we've seen in the last 10 years yeah the first protester though was sentenced to death and there's another 15,000 protesters thought to have been arrested so far. How concerning uh, that these, that, that executions could become far more common as a way of quelling this? It's really worrying the way the judiciary system in Iran works. It's, it's really close linked to the government. So there is no uh, fair legal procedure. A lot of these 15,000 people have no access to the independent lawyers. Um, the cases they're building are really, really un, um, unjustified. For example, I know a case that the teenagers received a text about, let's go and burn something. And then that became a reason for him to be on, on you know, on the cause of, yeah, he's, he wanted to incite violence. And then um, there, is a, there is a justification within the law for him to be executed as well. And there are a lot of cases like this for simple takes and things like this. And, and I think one of the important things for us outside Iran to do is raise the awareness around it. The international community needs to take action and put pressure on the Iranian government. We had instances before we campaigned against the execution in Iran. And when the international community's pressure is uh, high enough, the Iranian government backed off. So I think it's really, really crucial at this moment for everyone to react to this and take action. Yeah. I'm interested in an idea that you have for action during the World Cup where the eyes of, of many will, you know, be globally focused. Take us through what you're suggesting. So, um, thank you for that. Um, on the, Massa was 22 years old and the day she was born on was 22nd. And um, one of the things that happened before with the Iranian and the Iranians are worried about is that the, the solidarity that they've seen from people outside Iran would die down, especially when there is a big event out there. So, we, I thought it's good to um, use this day, number to remember her and then send a signal to the Iranian people inside that even though we, we might not be able to do much for you, we can shout her name at the minute 22 of each game wherever we are. When we are watching a football in the house with our family members or in a stadium or fan zones, we gonna shout her name uh, and the slogan is quite simple. Say her name, Mahsa Amini, and um, remember her 
death and send solidarity message to the Iranians. Yeah, it would be it would be wonderful if that did catch on, and um, that people could do that because, as you say, I mean, it's it's it seems as if this time round there is a, a real desire. What? What, though, will bring the Iranian government down? What will give them an opportunity to save face and potentially bring in some reforms? I think this, to save face is almost impossible. The Iranian government's track record of not listening to people and not being a strategic and understanding of the demands, um, it's obvious. But um, and, and from what, again, I'm going to go back to the leaked uh, voices and recordings that we've heard uh, recently, is that they don't, they realize after eight weeks that the first death, Mahsa's death, wasn't, uh, you know, influenced by any way from outside world. And they've been claiming that for the eight weeks. But now we hear, oh, they knew it from the beginning, but they pretend still that that, that wasn't the case. So I don't see any reason for Iranian governments to change because the demand is obvious. Demand is for them to go and people are not going to back off from them. So for them, the only way forward is more violence unless the international community put a lot of diplomatic pressure on them. So they decide to step down or, you know, save face in a way that they won't be like the transitional justice would happen in a proper way and they won't they will have a way out yeah well we should say her name during the world cup at that 22 minute mark good to talk thank you so much